Uh, I'm going to do something a little different than I usually do. I usually paint in my studio with you guys. Uh, today, uh, I'm up here up north in Michigan, uh, and I want to do a little plain air painting. And it's, well, I had a lot of requests for people who want to see my, uh, you know, see how to do it and how I go about it and stuff. And so I'm just going to explain my basics and stuff for you. The things you need, first of all, let's go through the things you need. You know, you need a nice easel, some horse, a portable easel. The, this is just a regular French easel. There are M boxes, which are, you know, you attach to a tripod. Uh, and there are uh, a couple other easels out there you can use. Uh, but I just go with a little French easel because they're cheap and they're, you know, pretty portable. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bulky, but, you know, I don't uh, go too far, you know, when I'm usually going out. Okay. So things you other things you'll need, you know, of course you need a canvas. Uh, definitely a garbage bag. You're going to need garbage bags, uh, a garbage bag, because, you know, when you're out there using uh, another thing you need is paper towels. When you use these paper towels, you got to put them somewhere and we don't like to uh, destroy nature too much as much that much so let's uh keep them in a uh, disposable bag groceries little plastic bags work wonders and stuff uh or if you don't want to even use paper towels you know we always got rags and stuff they work out great too T old t-shirts fabulous for this um of course you need your paints uh other things you might think about needing uh using instead are uh, you going to be using a dryer instead of uh, a paint dryer I'm mixing my medium instead of uh, using just my regular safflower oil. We're using that because uh, we want this thing to dry pretty quickly because we're going to be taking taking it somewhere and stuff. So we want to move, get it to move, uh, ready to move. There's also this other one. This is a solvent-free uh, dryer and stuff. It's pretty good by Gelkid. Uh, it's a um, you know a uh, gel medium, which is really good. Okay, but then after that, you're going to need your regular tools. You're going to need all your, a few brushes. You probably can, let me put this down. You know, you know, you can get away with a few less brushes, I tell you, you know, because I end up painting with, you know, taking a bunch of brushes and end up painting with like three or four of them. Um, so definitely you need a bristle brush, nice synthetic, a big one, and then maybe just go down to a, you know, a, a very small one. And then the same with the bristle brush. You know, maybe you need a smaller bristle brush too. Uh, then I have a couple of little rigger brushes and stuff just in case I need them. You know, maybe, you know, you never know. But then also my palette knife. And that will come in and definitely come in handy when uh, getting in, involved with trying to get paint on this thing quickly. Uh, Another thing you might need, of course, you're going to need your oils. We got those guys out today. I got uh, titanium white. I have cad yellow, cad red, cad orange, yellow ochre, some alizarin crimson, cobalt blue hue, and some Eliz and phthalo green. Those are the only colors. I mean, you could do you, there's there you can do this on a very very limited palette where you're only using uh, yellow, red, blue, and white. Uh, and that worked out fine, uh, you know, uh, because you're only given so much time, and sometimes that helps. Uh, uh, so you need to need is something to carry your your paintings home in. That's one of the <laughs> things you find out very quickly when you start uh, plein air painting. That you know, you know, getting the paint done is great, but getting it home can also be a, a pain in the ass. But um, so they make uh, certain carriers you got here you can buy different manufacturers. Uh, and this is just a real cheap uh, portable one, uh, reusable portable one that uh, I, I have. Um, also, but I find uh, if you can't find a paint carrier, an old pizza box will work perfect for it. These things are made to carry important stuff. So, I would definitely, you know, next time you go out for a pizza, ask for an extra pizza box and stuff. This, especially large, large, medium, get one in every size. That way, you know, you never know what size you're going to be painting, right? Okay. 
All right, so that's the good stuff. That's what we're going with. Um, next, what you need. Well, you need a scene and stuff. You need to find a place to paint and stuff. And uh, I'm here up here at my cottage. I have Wi-Fi, so that's a good reason while I'm doing this because I could put it on, you know, I don't have to stop and it will keep going. And it won't break up. My, But what else you need? You need a good scene stuff. I got a pretty good scene here, right? I got, you know, this is what we look out at a lot. You know, da -da. Um, but I have to use this spot. Usually I'll show you around and stuff, but what happens is my camera, the camera lens on these things uh, just burn out and stuff. And you probably have a hard time even seeing anything I'm gonna paint back down there because uh, the lens on the camera just just burns out all, all the whites or lights and stuff. So uh, hopefully my, my painting will pick them up for you. Uh, okay. Other things to think about uh, painting wise. We got a limited time, very limited time. So this guy's sitting here talking and stuff and should be busy mixing paint and going, right? Yeah, I should, I should be doing that. You do have a limited time. You got about an hour, hour and a half, lucky, luckily, if you're lucky. A lot of people only do 15 minutes and that's it, you know, you, but uh, I'll probably be going for about an hour, you know, hopefully. Uh, one of the things also you want to do when you go out here and stuff, okay, you take in your, your surroundings, you see everything, you pick your, pick your items out. One of the biggest things you want to do, uh, for me is to, uh, one second, let me grab this. I usually take out my phone, but I don't have my phone on me. I have my iPad on me and, um, get to a photo um what i'll do is use my photo sorry i don't need that in my hands anymore uh i'll go around and take shots of things and compose them finding a good compose go back in after i, I found, took a bunch of pictures and stuff and i kind of think i settled on the spot i will take it and you know take the picture take it you know don't need that um you know blow it up and figure out what i really want to photograph and i mean what i really want to paint uh you could do sketches you can do uh hand sketches and stuff but i find this is far quicker and i'm gonna need a photo of the of it afterwards anyway so taking photos kind of trimming it out for myself so that I know what I'm gonna be painting and uh, want to paint and be done with it. So that's what I'm doing here. As you can tell, this is, this is the photo. You can see it like that. You look at that and you can see, you know, everything's, I can see it in the camera too. Everything's burnt out. So that's why I'm, I'm at this one spot. <laughs> this is the best spot I have for doing this in the shade. Now that's the other thing, shade finding shade to paint in. Uh, if you don't have shade, you have to get an umbrella for your, uh, and attach that. Uh, and the, uh, you know, and when windy days, umbrellas can be a bear. I mean, I was up in Mackinac, total sun and uh, on the beach, trying to put up an umbrella with the wind just gusting off the lake. And uh, <laughs> You get it almost all set up, and then you it just it just catches like a like a uh, like a parachute, and just pulls your pulls your thing over. Uh, so I try not to use to those things. I'd rather find a tree that's going to find me shade and stuff. So basically, now I got some shade, and um, it's a timer too. It's like okay, well, I only have so much time, and now I finally got some shade on my uh, board here. I can paint. I want consistent light. I don't really want dappled light. Even on like uh, down here on my uh, uh, palette and stuff, I'd like to have, don't really want uh, uh, that. So, uh, but still, what we can do, you gotta do what you can do, right? I did have painted in full sun and it's, it's really tough. I mean, your paintings will look totally different than what you thought they were going to look like. And that is what plein air is about. 
okay, again, you get you get an hour and a half, really an hour. You know, if you're not done in an hour, you're in trouble. Um, hour and a half if it's on cloudy days, I think pretty much. Uh, we'll see. Take photos. Take a photo to mark your spot at the beginning. Take a photo at the end. You know, take a photo and then maybe walk in there and find that thing you want to be, you want to really focus on because that's the thing you should be going for right away. Your focal point, because that the light on that's going to change probably the first thing because it's usually your lightest and your darkest thing. And it will change, like the light on that thing is changing so quick. Yes, <laughs> that's my focal point. Well, for, for today, you know, I'm just showing you guys how to do it, not picking your references out. Uh, so that's that's what we got going. Uh, and uh, okay, first thing, another thing I do, the way I work at, in back in the studio is pretty much a plain air way to go. I mix my paints up before I paint, before I even draw or anything, because I want the maximum amount of painting time. And you can't get that if you're mixing paints and painting and painting, you know, and going back and forth. You need to be able to have your palette set up, you know, everything good to go. And then you explode into your paint, your thing, into your canvas as much fast as you can. That's the simplest, cleanest way to go. Uh, that's why I'll be demonstrating really quickly. Uh, and I'll, I'm basically, I'm just going to do this little teeny scene. Another thing, canvases too, size-wise, small. Small, keep them small. Uh, unless you're painting with, you got a big old palette and you got a big old brushes. Smaller pack canvases are, are probably the way they go. The way we pretty much go. I, you know, nine by 12, 12 by 16 is about the biggest I'll go. You know, uh, you know, I really don't do anything. Most of the time, too, I'm going to try to get it as finished as possible at least get all the colors in there and you know make take really good what we call good color notes and that's what i'm going to work on making sure my colors are right you know and then i have my pat colors right down here and stuff and so when i do go back in the studio i pretty much have the colors and i can you know finish it off if i have to when you know from the photos and paintings or photographs but that's the thing about photographs they go dark you know, they really all your, you lose all your shadows and stuff. Everything goes really dark. So um, we're going to take and uh, try to keep that in mind when we paint today. And I'll try to point it out. Let me put this back down. Oh, one more thing that's really kind of good and important too is water. You know, having water uh, when you're out there and hot and stuff, especially if you're going to be out there. Usually if I go out painting, it's, it's going to be, at least almost half the day at least and stuff so having water uh you know able to have water somewhere and stuff is good to have too get dry quick so let's get into this you got my colors i got my paper towels put my water down um yeah let's see you guys see my palette? Not really. Uh, not much I can do about that. That's not. I can hold it. Let me see if I can do this. Let me tip this down just a hair. Sure, get it. Let me see what drop this down to. Because you guys don't need to see me anymore. But it would be good to see the, pa the painting, right? That's the thing about this stuff. And it's just not going to work. Okay, one two. I'll have to trim this out.
guess that's getting it. I'm gonna pull, I'm going to pull my uh, easel out just a hair more, just in case you guys, for you guys can see the bottom, see the paint. Not an easy thing to do, moving your palette. Because you're going to lose everything. Anyway, pick up my brushes and things. We are ready to go. Hopefully, you guys can see that now. That's yeah. I know you guys can see it. I wish the picture could be bigger. Uh, anyway, let's go through this. Don't need that many brushes. Don't need these things. I was just showing them. I got my oil in there. Let's put these guys. All right. Let's start off with the Let's start off drawing drawing it in. Um, I'm going to use some uh, blue and alizarin together here. And this is a little purple making up. I'm going to draw that in first just to start here and then I'll mix up my colors. Let's see. Rule of thirds. Trying to put some water right there. This right, water there. And then you get, you see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there are a lot of uh, um, shadows going across here. Sorry. I'm just going to put my little thing here. Okay. One of the things you want to do too, when you start getting into these things and stuff is subtracting a few elements, not putting everything in here because you'll never get it done. Right. So you want to just, you know, focus on a few things here. This guy should only be about this size. I'm not going to put in my uh, my pump house, basically. And this is my first one. This is going to be a loose, probably a loose, very loose, quick one. I'm not going to, you know work too hard. Maybe I'll just pretty much going to work on just this little area here, you know, and, you know, make colors for everything else. And then hopefully I, you know, things a little bit sun. You know, long shadows. We do want those. Uh, so either you can get them in the morning or you can get them in, in the evening, you know, usually painting it in the afternoon, uh, bright and sun. I'll go get lunch and take a break, you know, and then come back, and, you know, after this, you get some shadows directly overhead. Usually it's pretty, doesn't do too much for you. So, all right. That's, you know, just going to start off some blue and uh, I'm going to start off with blue and cad red mix. Another thing out here, the light's just different. It's, everything looks darker. I mean, on my palette and stuff because I'm in shade. So well, let's just get going here though. No more excuses. Play like a champion. Okay, so I need that color. I love like that color and stuff. 
I'm also going to do another color of blue and cad red, cad orange, I mean. Probably a lot more cad orange. Okay, and that's probably going to be my, probably my main color for this guy. You know, if I take this color and go up here and go, yeah, it's a little, a little bright. But that's okay. If I add white to it now, let me take a piece of this and add white to it. And come up with the basic tone for this guy. So this is just cad, cad orange and blue. And I'm getting a kind of a very cream color. Pretty close, pretty close. Okay. So that's going to do three quarters of the work there. Uh, I'll probably take, just like I do in my studio, just take a little piece and put some cad red into one section of it. You know, take a pile and split it, add some cad red, take the other pile, add some cad yellow to it. It's very bright, maybe add some white too. Same over here, just add some white to these colors. Okay. All right, uh, then we'll go, I'm gonna go right to the grass. Grass is gonna be blue and blue and ochre. Blue ochre, start off with, it's your go-to, look it up and say, okay, this is, that's pretty good. It's gonna need some red in it, some cad red into it. Nice warm day. Sunny day, put some red, cad red into that color. So you got a red green going here. Yeah, that's pretty close. Probably just a touch of blue, maybe. Cool it off. Okay, so that'll be pretty much. I think I can take that color, and if I really blew it out a little bit more, put add more blue to it, make it darker, darker. You know, into that pile. So I'm basically. Uh, yeah, that's a lot closer. Still, I think it's uh, more cad red into that too. Okay, so that's behind it. That's the shadows going behind, and then underneath and stuff. Underneath, they get really strong, and then you get really light ones. So the grass color, kind of faded out, burnt color. Uh, you know, we basically, I have uh, here some. I have uh, ochre and blue here with white. Uh, I'm going to take a piece of that and just, you know, add a bunch more white to it, like double, half and half. You know, knock this thing back way up there on the on the gray scale. So this is pretty probably around the, it's going to be around the two or so. That starts to get me into what's back there and stuff. So uh, that's not bad. Uh, might add just a little yellow, cad yellow into it. Okay, cad yellow. See, this is why I wanna mix my colors ahead of time because those shadows can be changing and stuff because I'm taking my, you know, I'm taking my sweet butt time here on this thing. I should be been flying. Um, you know, this it takes as long as it takes. One of the things is, yeah, hurry up and slow down. That's what I want to tell you too. Hurry up, get there, get your everything going and things. But when you when you start to paint and stuff, take a breath, slow down and paint. Don't get too too excited because that's you know usually what happens. You get too excited. Uh, Water color. We're going to start off with just blue and white at the beginning here. Just the basic. Blue and white, get the right value, value first. And then we'll move it over and discuss, you know, you know, what color the sky is that's shining in here and stuff. This is really pretty close already. Uh, I might put a little bit of phthalo green into it. Just a little darker too. Well. Not, not everywhere, just 
I got a good, yeah, just the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Talking to myself and mixing at the same time. It's always a good, good sign. So value, pretty close. There's some coolness up on top. That'll come from the sky. Uh, okay. Uh, darks in the back. What are those? Of course, they're blue. Um, I'm going to go with cad red and blue and white. Mostly, mostly blue. Well, I said that, and that's not the color I want. So it's not that. Let's try again. We'll edit that part out. Blue and alizarin. More blue. More blue than white. Just a little bit of white. There we go. I want a purple. And I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking like a, a, a You know, I thought it might be a nice warm purple back there because of the red I was using in the grass and stuff. You know, and I go, no, that's not it. And I had too much white. Let's see. That's okay. This is going to come in handy. This is going to also go in the water a little bit. There we go. Uh, also, I'm going to add, take a piece of this and add some phthalo green to it. Just scraping a phthalo green to it for that area. Purples and phthalo green. There we go. That's a nice color. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the sky a little bit. What I see, if I do get up there and stuff, it's going to be a lot lighter. I can probably take a little bit of this water, uh, borrow, and add a lot of white to it it should be that a little more white thing i do also is just clean my knife after each color probably don't see that but it's a nice thing to think to think about okay all right so all these colors space i got the basics of these of these things here you know Got some, some warms, got some cools, I got some greens, light greens, cool greens. Um, you know, I'm gonna probably gonna end up making a bunch more greens, you know, as I go. But that's okay. I want to get the basics done done first here, and then we'll move on. All right, so still. All right, got my drawing done. Yeah, that's a drawing. Uh, my drawing done. I got my colors mixed. The next thing, now the rest of the time I get to do is paint. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get something done here. Uh, so I'm going to take out a decent sized brush to work on with. Nice 10, size 10. Keep that done. And uh, block in my dark. Um, I think I'm going to work right here on this guy first. So, like I was saying, you know, I don't, you know, unless if, if it was about the shadows, I'd be painting the shadows first. It's about him. And if I can get the light on him right first, uh, you know, everything else can go. So, I'm going to get the, get the, do that. You know, I had all this time, I could have picked out such, you know, I had such great plans for this one too. I was going to take you down to the lake and uh, do this. But as soon as I got down there, uh, didn't have any Wi-Fi down there. Wi-Fi wouldn't have thought I was going to lose connection, I felt, so I didn't want to do that. Um, and then... Also, I was just, you know, there was no shade right there. Uh, another bad thing. 
and everything was burnt out. So it's like, well, you know, you guys won't be able to see anything and I'll look, uh, you know, make myself look dumber than I already do, you know, so whatever. So I'm just going to rough it in with uh, my colors. These are the cat oranges and uh, blue mix right here going into this uh, chimney. I can't remember the name of this. I bought this years and years ago. It's, uh, it's held up pretty well over the winters and stuff here. So let's get him in. Yes, designed in. Down here in the corner and stuff, no big deal. Try not to bite off more than you can chew, right? That's the whole thing here. You don't want to, you know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, I want a finished piece. Sometimes I do this a lot. That's why I was trying to say that taking photos and sketching it out from your photo sometimes is a good way to go because of uh, it already hones you in and keeps you from, I end up putting in trees from the neighbor's yard and bringing those over and think that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. But uh, I just keep running and, and, and I don't, and it doesn't stop. And you are like, we, like I said, limited, very limited time-wise. And I should be, you know, doing this a little faster even. So just going to work a little more color into here. Like I said, I would not worry too much about the highlights, but then again, you know, I want to just block it in. I'm not going to, you know, the light's changing so quickly here. If you don't do this, it will look different in a minute. And pretty much everything you just did, it's going to be gone. So start again. Get these highlights in a little bit. And the nice thing is after I get, you know, that done. You know, after I get that done, you know, everything else will be all right. I mean, I can, you know, I feel like I can start to just relax a little bit not relax but just breathe a little bit take take in a little, a little bit more and the thing is also this will this this thing's gonna pick up a lot of speed when i uh get going here in a minute too that's a fun thing too about these things they go fast and they're kind of you know painless you don't take it too serious, you know. I'm not in a competition. You know, I don't do competitions in plain air. You know, I just try to uh, tell what I learned. Okay, very simply, you know, I'm going to start to uh, lock around it, knock out that, uh, <laughs> my pump house. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I picked, you know, best place. I, I go to the best places. So I'm going to stir off my green. These are my, the ones I made up and stuff. And I'll use those, just a little bit of oil. Trim these guys in here. And this is, like I said, one of the places like uh, uh, these uh, shadows move quickly. So if you concentrate on one little area at a time, don't go, don't, you know, dive around because, uh, you know, that you'll just make a mess of it. A lot of people put these things in, you can put these in any way you want. Some people put them in very thin at the beginning and then get thicker. You're supposed to get thicker as you go to lighter colors and stuff. 
but I'm working on the, on the focal point. So that's why I'm down here doing this right here. Now, that's my decision. So I'm got, you gotta live with it a little bit. Yeah, you got a beautiful lake there, but I figured you guys couldn't see that anyway. So to go ahead and paint that, it'd probably be just a waste of time. Um, it's my lake and I'm wasting time. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, now I'm just gonna bring a little bit of more light into this guy. I can see some new light coming in. So you can just see since we started, this light here has changed so much that uh, one of the things I like to say is I don't wanna be chasing light in the pit my, yeah, when I'm out here. So I'm gonna say this area is, you know, done. I can't, I can't do anything. The water and the, and the stuff back there is going to be changing. The, the light's going to be changing on these guys and stuff. But uh, I'm going to be going, moving on from there. I'm going to just work. I'm going to, usually you work back to forward, forward. And, uh, but I was going to, on this one, I'm going to be doing just moving to the back here a little bit. Moving towards the back using a big brush now. Got my tree here. Okay. Using my greens, I put a little more, some phthalo into it, cool it off. Got to like a lot of, you know, dried grass and mud going, not mud, but dirt going on. Um, one of the things I do with my French cheese and stuff, you have a few things here. You got a couple of guards here. You can use it just like a regular easel at home. But uh, I like using these, these connectors and stuff because they can really tighten your painting down. Uh, uh, to the back and stuff, so when you've got wind and stuff, it doesn't rock and and uh, roll, you know, and you know, dance and start dancing on you. So uh, that's why I'm doing that. Okay, let's get back here. And then right in here, I have nice shadows going back there. You know, we'll get the basic tone in first. I get right into my guy, push him out. Yeah. And the one thing to always remember about this too, what we're doing here, supposed to be fun. Um, and I enjoy be out there and be enjoyable and stuff. So I don't take myself too seriously uh, for this kind of stuff. What you guys see here and stuff. I take myself seriously when I'm really painting alone in the studio and, um, you know, working on pieces and stuff. That's, you know, I'll, that's when I'll concentrate on my, won't be talking so much. I usually don't talk that much when I'm uh, working. <laughs> Just turn the, crank the music and go. Just adding a little phthalo green to this color. Need some oil here to really loosen it up and get me going, get back here. As I recede, that's the thing in painting and stuff. Of course, this thing, when I recede in space, I need to add blue. I, you know, I got a lot of yard yet here to cover. Stuff I got to get here too. See, I got to be down. That's it right here. Okay, right there. Sorry, went right past my mark. That's okay. That's got, it should be warmer in the front here. So that's where I'm gonna add, make sure I have some, some more red in my green right in here. And as I go back, maybe I'll put counter at, and you can either put sky in, but I haven't played my sky yet. So um, I don't want to, uh, I can lighten it and put a little blue in, I don't want to, mess up my sky. I always put my skies in at the end. 
this stuff. So I'll take this green and, you know, take it out. I've got that tree here. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that tree in or not. It's just like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. See what kind of time we have. Let's paint it out for now. Just put this in simple. We got this tree over here. I think I'll just keep the, those guys in. Okay. Uh, good, good. Uh, clean my brush again. You know, wipe that baby out. Now I can put some highlights in. Um, I can go here. I might go with just a little more phthalo in my green yellows and just a little more yellow and then white so i'm just making adjustments and stuff from these things um here no that needs some more red add red Just a touch bright. Let's get in these big shadows. Like I said, this is what I always do. I just like. Grab from one place, bring it on over. Don't even realize I'm doing it. It's good to have a plan. So that's a good idea to take that phone and uh, make it work. I'm going to take some of this, mix in a little bit of the color in the, into here. Put this right here at the landing. Bring that back in. Okay. That's coming forward way down. So it's coming forward because of the red. Need more green in it. Making small small adjustments as I go. I'm not trying to do huge ones. Um, let's gray that down just a hair more. See if I can bring that up here. This looks a lot darker now than it was. Like I said, chasing light, you know, things just keep keep chasing, keep chasing. All right. At some point we have to finish. Okay, that's a nice thing about this too. Is you always there's always stuff to grab. It seems like you know, you know, I go, oh god, this I like. I need to stop here. I need to stop. What do I have? And then I look over there. And I go, oh, I got some flowers right there. I can use those guys and, and stop this area. All right, clean my brush. Let's say good enough for now. You know. Share that. I'm looking at the trees over there, just the basics of them. They just need some more red in them. It's pretty funny that uh, how things just kind of just, you know, kind of start to hold together in your painting really quickly. Um, need a nice clean brush. I'm going to go to with a Go with a synthetic for the water. You can put the water in. And then as I go back, I'm going to grab just a little bit of the
a little bit of the trees in the background color here and get that in here. There we go. Overpaint a little bit, no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna go right into the darks in the into the into the trees back there, right on the lake. Nice that they're picking up uh, All right. Um, you know, uh, I'll be using some of that just to clean up the edge here in the water. Then uh, back to the blue and uh, blue and uh, ochre green. the basic tones for these guys basic tones then i'll be mixing them with a few other greens i have yeah when we get done that's like i said you them stand out get a little more sun okay Okay, clean my brush and then just put up the little sky on top. Usually sky, one of the last things I do, we are running pretty close to time. Now, yeah, I took out all the good stuff, you know. You know, I've got a nice dark tree there to put in. And to do that, see if I have it. Don't have it in here. Okay, I'm just going to scrape off where I think that tree is going to be, where I need it. into there. Okay. Again, clean my brush. Um, definitely blue. A little Blizzard, a little pink. Okay, more blue. Okay, to get this guy to go in, I'm gonna have to dip my brush in oil first before I grab my paint. Just to go over the other colors. A big oak here coming in, right in here. 
Then I'm just going to put in the trunk and put in some uh, you know, with those uh, shadows in. Um, definitely in the cad red side, I would say, warmth and stuff. And the sh getting shadows in. I'm going to darken it on top to bring it down, to keep it from running off a little bit. And on the sides. Hopefully that doesn't look too bad yet. That's the thing. <laughs> Takes a while to get things right. Okay, I'm going to put some warmth in this tree down in here. Just going to mix in some leftover uh, cat orange into this thing here. Get some warmth right here. Oh, some white showing through here. Okay. Um. All right, that's the basic blocking. You know, we got it blocked in. Uh, just needs a lot more stuff. So we're going to, but we only have 15 minutes to do it. So let's get busy. I'm going to come back in here into the grass in the front here. A little stronger uh, shadow with a little more red in it. Just work that about halfway back a little bit. And halfway back into the shadow. A few couple cutoffs. You know, you could be playing with a dappled light forever. So don't have to. I'm going to add, put a little phthalo green into this color now. Add a little oil into it. And get the back side here. And then you know, work it back a little bit. Just a touch more phalo into it. Phalo is cool. So it's going to cool it off. Light it up a little bit. Then I'm going to try to put in a few details. I want to just basically hit the light. You know, that's what I really was kind of interested in was uh, the strength of the light going through here. Let me try again on trying to get that in right. I need to get okay. I'm gonna mix up again that try to get that far away color a little bit. And that's gonna have just a little bit of phalo in cad yellow in it. I'm sure it's gonna have some cad red in it just looks a little yeah more cad red and it's a little earthier i think i'll use let me see wait this color and just a little more cad phalo uh, not rich enough 
Um, yeah, cat orange and cat yellow into that color. Yeah, that's it. Okay, far back color, phthalo green, cat orange, cat yellow, maybe a little cat brick, then some white. And that should do it. Okay, coming forward for the next area of light, you're gonna have that same, it's gonna be the same, you know, it's grass, it's gonna be the same thing, but I'm gonna push, add a little more cad yellow to it as you come forward and white, just where it doesn't, you know, jump off too much. And then we come way forward again. Same thing, just more cad yellow, ton more cad white. Yeah, that's gonna be it in the end. So let's get those lights in right. That's the thing is I was looking at that. Okay, let me get that in. Just a little bit of oil. Grab my thing and let's get. I'm going to get this one spot over here, right here. What the heck? So just looks like a that's the back one. Now um, you're going to the middle middle light so section, uh, and that has more cad yellow in it and more white. I am just pushing that one more step after putting it in there. Sometimes whatever you do that works on, you know, here sometimes you know just changes when it gets mixed with color. So. That's pretty good. Now I can use a little bit of that and pull these two together so they don't feel like that big a jump. Then I can use the rest of it in here. Pull through here a little bit. This is where usually where the deer are in the morning here. So right in here, coming in here, catching all the acorns from this uh, oak tree here. Okay, so at least that's working. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta hear your battles uh, out here. You gotta take 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 the wind. You know, small winds. You don't get all big ones all the time. Painting. All right, that's working. Now you can see those two guys are starting to work well. Uh, I don't like that spot. Yeah. And let's see if we can bring this up a little bit, clean my brush just lightly and grab some new oil. Grab the light stuff. And see. See if I can get this to work. Okay. 
see the light change a little bit, you know, not too bad. But it helps, you know, it just makes this, I know I put in this tree and the tree here looks kind of funky because of uh, it uh, had the wrong shadows around it here. So I wanna just fix this up guy up a little bit. And of course, that's about it from that. Yeah. Work these guys together a little bit, these browns. Yeah, that's the earlier one, earlier section here. Okay. All right. All right. Now I'm going to take it and uh, do the water back there. As you can see, the water changed a lot. That's why you concentrate on one thing at a time. You don't. Uh, I usually, you know, like to go and do everything really quick, you know, but uh, it usually doesn't work that way. So let's get this in right now. Um, go back to uh, my blue and purple here. Probably a little phthalo green into it. And these are pretty much the darkest colors I'm going to be using. And they go right back in here. So I'm going to put a little oil on my brush for I can get it to glide over these things. Start right here and get, the, get it in. Okay, not bad. And then again over here, follow it up. Got some houses we'll back there too. You can get to, if you can get to them. Uh, we'll, I'll just take a minute. Let me get, want to get this stuff done. I'm going to use some green because of the green of the stuff here is reflecting in the in here. I'm going to just lay my brush down. You know, this is what I would do with a bristle. That's what I should do. Just clean out this bristle a little bit. Okay, phthalo green. This would just be blue and ochre. Probably a mix. And green, yeah, a touch of red into it, not much. Okay, I'm just gonna lay my brush flat down, you know, in the spot. It's gonna be it's a little bit big. I can lay down and just drag it across and let it come off how I want it comes off. Uh, all right, well, things are changing. I'm going to change to my, uh, now the lights on that back there, it's really nice and stuff. So I'm going to go back and paint in some houses back there. Paint the, help paint the houses. You know, clean up a little bit of stuff here. But I need to get that blue purple again back there, dark. I hear it to the edge. I can get the houses in pretty close over here. 
then put that final green topping back in on top of these trees back there. I got some bright yellow greens yet to put in too. I should probably think about those. Yeah. I'm gonna get to go right to the green. I'm gonna go switch switch course here and get these guys in before the light totally gone on them. Cad yellow, phalo green. See, it makes this god awful bright green. Put in a little cad orange into it though. Yeah, let's put a little cat orange or cat red into it. More yellow now. It start, starts to settle down. Maybe it's a joy. Okay. See how the light has changed just from a few hours so that's what you're dealing with so knowing your stuff knowing to uh just get your focus in for first because that's not the way it's going to be get your lights in and then uh work from there i have to put some white in there that's what i'm missing Yes, a little white into that color. So this is phalo green, a lot of yellow. Um, cad yellow, just a touch of cad red and yet orange to it here and there. There are some trees back over there. I'm not sure if I need them, you know. There's two two here. So that's what I'm doing. I just end up chasing light all the time. But uh, I want to put in a few things. I want to put in the buildings back across and see the reflections gone. <laughs> Give me a few minutes and we'll come back. So in that meantime, I'm going to put in... Uh, Put in these uh, this boat. I'm just going to put in one of them. Uh, this is a he puts his canoe up here over here on some pe pegs and stuff. So I'm put that in. That's a little bit of uh, let's see. That was. Uh, White and yellow and uh, white and ochre uh, and still cad red into it. Just put a little more red into it. And I can tie it into the back end of this guy a little bit. We said. Not there now. Maybe there's a few things back there it could be painted. It still got a lot of good light back there. Got the highlight on that thing. It's a cool highlight. It's white. Okay. Back to the house. I got just a little bit of land. Now a lot of times I'm not like recreating uh, colors. I'm just going to be using what I pretty much have here. What? Pretty close. I don't have to. No.
So at least I did one thing right for you. I did put in the high, the, put the big, this guy, this big focus in here. <laughs> but now we're changing focus. We're moving back in here a little bit. But it's okay. It's fun. It's paint. Hopefully uh, this will work for you guys. Make that building. Another building here, right in here, a little bit bigger. Little white top there. It's basically a just a little bit of uh, white and cad red mix instead of white. I'm not using like pure white back in here. It has a little bit of cad red mix into it. And just getting those guys in and you can start to see the reflections. Okay. I want to use that reflections and they're, they're straight. Break down from the thing. So it comes straight down. So that's all I'm using right there. Same color right into the color, into the blue. And you get some green. That's what I should have been painting too, but that's so far off. Camera just does not pick this stuff up that well. You know, so, you know, technical difficulties, I guess, you know. Back there. Okay. Diff and then get the you know, the greens on there. Just make sure you get the think about touch of reflection. Always brings it alive. Okay. All right. Got you know everything going. Looking good. You got some things. Let's get some. Nice, stronger shadows going across here, back and forth. Get some greens, get some oil to make sure they everything slides. And okay, that needs some shadow underneath it now. And the shadow here just not strong enough to hold it down. So I'm gonna put some purple into it, some red, and these greens right in here now. Hold this thing down a little bit in the shade shade area here. At least I have sort of it marked, so it's good. All right, I want to get the little more stronger shadow on the tree over here. All right, last thing. I never even put in the fence. So I want to put in the fence. I guess I'll add this little cad red to my dark blue mess of colors here. And let this lead the eye down here to need to go right here. I did not put my paddle boat out there. Now I'm going to fix the fence too here. Usually, uh, my wife would be all over me if I didn't, you know. She's been, these posts have fallen, fallen over. I said, I'll just fix them here. Okay. 
little bit. Little things, little things get a little darker here. Right at the foot. Let's see. Now I can darken in, blend them out a little bit. Blend them into there. Okay. Oh, I thought that was going to be nice too. A little purple right in here. Blend it into the green a little bit. Thing is, when you blend purple into green, you get mud. So the thing is, not to really blend, but to put it next to it. Get a little stronger dark right underneath that boat, even though. Yeah. I don't want to make it a focal point. Just going to do it. That'll help. I need, I need a little bit of dark on this tree edge. Just a little bit darker too, all everywhere around. Get that purple, maybe a little phthalo green into it. Right into here, in this corner here. That's the little noogies you get to do. Otherwise, you know, you got to have the basics done quickly or, uh, you know, forget it. I do need those trees in and then I'm done. I promise, I promise. Phalo green, I'm just going with cad red into my blues. And I'm gonna put, put one of these trees there and just another one right here. Right on the edge, of course, it's really bad I design idea. But I'm just gonna get some light on them and stuff. Just a little warmth. Just feel like I need something over here. On the edge, almost too much, almost too much. I'm gonna cut the light on it a little bit, a little dark at the bottom. You know, you know, you got this scene here, right? And uh, looking okay. Now, I should move. I can see it right in here. If I don't put that in there, you know, sometimes there's are the key things that will uh, sell a painting and stuff. You know, those little things. So. No dogs, I didn't put the dogs in, so. I know where things are, you guys don't, but that's right there would be the. Now one more shot at the light in the, in the lake. See if I can bright, brighten it up. I'm gonna be using basically the sky in here. Well, just not that bright. See, this is where, the, you know, you start to find out where do I have time, you know, to paint? I mean, where, 
on this thing. Where do I have a few extra minutes? I mean, it's not going to change too drastically. You know, find those little areas. You know, you can get them at the end. Right, bring that one one more time, and we are out. Keep there stronger highlight on my on this guy now. Remember this thing. This thing had a really a lot stronger light there. Need a couple stops right here. I was gonna grab a couple flowers to come into light right in the shadow's edge. Right here. Grab my knife and finish it off with a couple dots of things here. Bring in some grasses right here on the edges of things. Find a couple more light spots down in here. Paint some air into it. Not put didn't think I'd have to do this. This is like wrought iron uh holding this thing up and uh feet up. It wasn't grabbing any light and it wasn't reflecting anything, so figured it you know won't make much difference. when I put that, that in. Put in a, just a little dark, little leaf action down here. Dark, dark. Come in, working my way back in here. Okay, bam. I'll go back in here, and that will be, that will be it. You know, sometimes it's the indication of stuff. Loosen it up. That's why I always bring out my knife at the end. Because it's usually when I want to loosen things up because I've already, you know, painted pretty hard. Okay.
did not put in the paddle boat. Just didn't think it was going to work. I already had this boat in. I had this thing and I had a big tree over here. Um, just figured it was gonna, not going to be there. So let's, you know, bring in a little more light on this guy now. Got some nice little teeny dots of light here he didn't have before. So sometimes, you know, you can take advantage of things. You don't have to live with your beginning uh, things there. You can start to get some light into that stuff. I think uh, these guys probably want just a little on the white side. Put a little red into them. This is, again, I'm using some of this color here of uh, from him. So just bring that in. And that is what's there. So it's like, okay. Little teeny things. It's dark right here. Right against that that tree again. You know, you know, no reason for that thing to be. Be up in the air. So on this thing, so let's drop it down on the ground like it's tiptoed over. Much far dumb, better idea. Better idea. All right. These greens in here and something right here, bright green flower. All right, well, I was thinking about doing two. Well, I think we got lucky to get one in. Um, I'll bring it in close to see it, or I'll bring it, I'll bring it to you guys, I think, because it's done. So. Just you want to be able just to touch these guys up. Usually that's why I like using these things because even when you put them in a thing there, it'll work better. So that's what it's looking like. You know, very simple, you know, clean little lines, you know, not too much back there. Yeah, design is, I mean, you're, I feel like I'm designing on a, on a fly on the fly here but uh that's what go that's what's happening here sorry I had, to tip, I had to tip the camera down so you guys could see my palette um all right well uh i'll try another one of these maybe we can like, do a better job next time you never know all right i will talk to you guys later so long bye